Okay, let's go. Sometime between 1994 and 2004, if you're into the gun world, you know that dark time as the assault weapons ban. The 10 year ban that for a lot of us, people that are my age, if you're in your 30s or even late 20s, you have memories of what it was like. And then a lot of you guys that are you know older than that, you, you were probably even of buying age back in those days and you could own stuff like that and you know what it was like to suffer through that ban. This is known as a Romanian WUM-1, W-U-M-1. I'll put that on the screen here. A lot of you are uh, familiar with maybe the old Romax. Uh, that's a name they were stamping a lot of, a of Romanian AKs that were coming in back in those dark times. This, however, has been deleted of some key features that made it deadly in the government's eyes. But honestly, it's not that bad to reverse. But I don't think we're going to reverse much of that. Here's the big one, right? Thumbhole stocks. A lot of you are used to Saigas coming in with the Monte Carlo style stocks and the trigger group moved back and those are, those are way more involved to convert. However, this one might not be that bad and honestly, it's probably not that bad to live with. This actually was imported by Interordinance before Sentry was bringing these things in. It tells you, it kind of gives you a date. What they did was they moon cut the receivers, which is probably the most difficult thing on these to have to reverse. You actually have to weld in a chunk of metal and you know, turn it into a regular AK receiver. But they did that so that you couldn't put a pistol grip on it and you couldn't put a regular stock on it. But honestly, as, as far as thumb hole stocks goes, this is probably the most aesthetically pleasing thumb hole stock ever put on an AK during the ban to get it in the country. Very res reminiscent of a PSL stock, real like com block laminate, very sexy. And these actually have that dumb recoil ugh, absorbing pad that absorbs no recoil. It takes the force of a thousand suns just to get it to move. If you're familiar with the PSL, extremely similar setup, basically the same. What's cool is the trigger group is not moved back too far like on a Saiga Sporter. It's in the regular location. You already have your double stack magwell ready to go. Extremely clean too. No bayonet lug. They've actually taken the wings off. That was one of the things they deleted. You have a thread protector tack welded in place that you can see there. Technically that means it's not threaded. Here's what's cool though. This is a super clean, nice Romanian AK, cold hammer forged, chrome line barrel. You even get mag weld dimples. You don't even get that on Wassers. You would get that on like the earlier SAR guns that were coming in that are highly collectible. Those don't even have threaded barrels. So you get a threaded barrel. I wouldn't worry too much about the bayonet lug. Mm, not the worst thing. Beautiful mag dimples, awesome blued bolt carrier and bolt. Just look at your screen right now. This gun is freaking minty. That bolt carrier and bolt looks way nicer than any freaking Wasser you're gonna find of any era. This gun has beautiful internals and I was pretty blown away because you look at the gun, first glance is gross, thumb hole stock ban era, ugh. But then you look on the inside and no one bought it, no one shot it much, it's freaking mint. So you have a threaded barrel, the whole front end's basically AKM. There's nothing to reverse here unless you really want to weld some wings back on. You can't change the receiver without some Heavy modification, but you do have the sexiest thumb, stock, thumb hole stock ever put on an AK during that time, so that's cool. And you can drop any trigger you want on it. And of course, it has a freaking optic mount, dude. It's like a fully loaded gun with like the easiest features deleted that are super reversible. And that's what we're gonna do today. We are going to do a couple of tasteful mods to this thing without changing it too much. And then we're gonna see if a thumb hole stock ban era gun can go hold its own at a match with a couple of basic upgrades. That's the goal here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that muzzle nut, change a couple things around. We'll come right back here and show you how we're gonna set it up to go run the match. Tasteful mods. Later we might do some really gross plastic bubba mods, but today we're gonna put some quality stuff on this redheaded stepchild of an AK. Oh, well, this is what we came up with. Uh, I was actually just gonna do a couple of things to this, but then I sort of went ham and spent all night doing many, many things. We broke the weld holding the thread protector on and put this muzzle device on from Unrivaled. Kyle Litzy, Zach Smith make those muzzle brakes. They're really freaking cool and they're tunable. I just thought it looked wild on this gun. That's honestly why I put it on there, but it should work pretty good. Uh, and then I remembered I had an RS Regulate GKR 10MS rail loaded out. The whole kitchen sink from Slate Black Industries is on there. A little bit of goon tape on the grip. And you can see we did manage to put an ALG trigger in there. I didn't polish the hammer face, it was really limited on time, so I just got it in there and got it working. 
We left the original safety. My Krebs safety didn't really fit in this very well. So we just loosened up this safety a little bit. Uh, RS Regulate mount, because this thing did come with an optic mount, a rail. AK-301 with a uh, AKMR upper, running my favorite optic in the world right now, the Trijicon SRO with the Jaeger Work Shield. This is not goon tape. This came on the gun when we bought it. I think this is like hockey tape. It's very sticky. It sticks to my fingers, but I left it on there because it looks a little better. A little extra craziness. <laughs> I think we're going to run a drum in it today a little bit. So today's match, I don't know what the stages look like. We're going to try to run the drum as much as possible. We also brought a 40 rounder and a bunch of 30 rounders. So we barely put a zero on it. I didn't really mean for it to work out this way, looking so cursed, but I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's ready. It's pretty, it's pretty ridiculous looking. It's pretty recoculous. Yeah, recoculous. I can't wait for people to tell me how much they hate it, and I can't wait to beat those people. Getting ready to cut yeah. This first stage is the perfect stage for the drum. It's just a lot of hosing. People that haven't been hosing have been getting penalties, so I think it's three or four shots. Three or four shots per target. Yep. Yep. I've got 10 pounds of Ban Era compliance. Things ugly. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a this, Miss Magwell's tighter than a man's anus. So hold on. Yes, <laughs> than a man's anus. Got it. Are you ready, sir? Yeah. Stand by. How heavy was that? Very heavy. Super accurate though. Yeah. Anytime I missed on that, I was swinging Clean the dot around, but dead on balls. Clean. Anyway. Good job, babe. Hey! Josh, look how nice his stock looks. It's almost as nice as mine. It's almost like. I don't remember. We start not touching it. Yeah, yeah, you start not touching it. We go on. And it's charged and everything? Yeah, loaded on safe, I think is what we're going to do. Yep. This mag in today's market, the ammo alone, it's got to be 30 bucks. Easy. You ready to get around Okay. All right. Are you ready? American Eagle. Ready? Bye. Hit! Shooting a pistol on this one, anyways. What was the time? 19:13. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh man. Unless that's a one hole, but I don't. Wow. Oh, hold on. Uh oh. It's not pretty good. Get some overlays. Uh, that's only one hole. Damn. So one up in. I like that. Uh, I want to get the match director here now. <laughs> All right, shooter, are you understand the course fire? Yeah. Stand by. <laughs> How'd you feel about that? Oh god, I hope I didn't miss. Two? Good, good, good. good. You have to admit, Zach, you have to admit too. The ban era garbage rod's not doing too bad. Fine. No, I mean, it's an AK, it's an AK, you know? You would own this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would change it, but yeah. Put your finger through.
All right, just, fire. <laughs> just rip the band aid off. Hey, I'll just, I'll just hands. hands by your side. Yeah. Uh, this have to be fully. No, you pick up the gun. There's only one. spot that it'll last. Same thing with that KP9. Shooter, are you ready? Shooter, stand by. Yeah, I wonder if yours is. Yeah, they have break it. I see three. On threat. Oh the shit, he did? Yeah, oh, right. was oh. One no shoot. Dang, and three there. Yeah, it, that's his fourth one from now on. Oh. Just a graze, you know, buff out. He'll be fine. I mean, I have faith in me, so I might beat his ass today. <laughs> so you pulled one from the target onto the no shoot. No. Damn. I, the ammo. I like buried the red dot in there. Damn. Okay, so we did really bad today. Overall, I think we did okay, but we had like 30 seconds in penalties. So I figured while we were uh, here, I'd get a little B-roll of just blasting. So camera girl, if you'd come around the left side a little bit. We have a little bit of a uh, brass case we're going to go ahead and get rid of now. I'm going this way. You see that okay? Mm -hmm. oh, dude, there's no way to go fast. The grip's just so terrible. Anyway, should be good and broken in now. Extremely hot, not a drop of grease left in it, but I think it shot really well today. Grip's terrible, trigger's cool, I love the rail, love the grip, red dot was awesome. The stock and grip suck really bad, but it looks cool, so that's all that matters, right? Alright, let's get back to the house. Okay, stage one, that was the shoot house, that's the tunnel that we run through with all the windows. Believe it or not, this gun shot first overall. $24.99 raw, no penalties. Uh, the only closest time behind us was a 2675. I can't freaking believe it, but this gun actually took first overall on at least one stage. Pretty crazy, and that one felt good. That was actually our first stage of the day, too. Stage two was the Mozambique stage. That's where you ran from barricade to barricade, and in between you had to Mozambique. Uh, I believe it was four or five targets. That was two in the chest, one in the head. We came in 16th overall because we had a freaking penalty, man. Without that penalty, we would have taken second overall. So our raw score would have been a 19-13 with the penalty. It bumped us up to a 29-13. Penalties are 10 seconds at this match. That is freaking brutal. But uh, the, gun, the gun shot awesome on that stage. That's also the stage that showed me that this grip angle and this trigger is doable, but you cannot really capitalize on an ALG trigger with this grip angle. Instead of gripping like this like with a regular grip really up close on a trigger you're gripping it like like that and you're barely pulling the trigger it's really hard to get your full muscle on it it's just it's weird as you can see how far forward you have to reach your finger i don't have the biggest hands in the world <laughs> it, it was tough so trying to go fast with that trigger was not easy Stage three, they call that the Rochella Bella Mag Chuck Challenge because she, for some reason, chucks the piss out of mags when she does reloads. So they worked that in a stage for us. That was pretty cool. We took second overall on that stage with this freaking Banera butthole stock gun that's been bubbled all to heck. Second overall, we shot it clean. Damn, first place was a 1217. Uh, second place, me, was a 1607. I could have done a lot, but that would have been hard to make up like four seconds on that guy. So kudos to him. He friggin' crushed it. So right now we have a first place, a 16th place, and a second place finish. Stage four was kind of the dumpster fire. It shot great, but I had two horrible penalties. So if we look at stage four, this was the stage where you shot every target twice, no more, no less. You could not take extra shots. Mandatory reload, shoot them all again twice. And for some friggin' reason on that stage... I completely pulled a shot into a no-shoot, so not only did I get 10 on the no-shoot, but I failed to neutralize the one that I should have hit because you couldn't take extra shots. 20 seconds alone on that stage, so let's find ourselves 35th, 35th out of 47. 
With our penalties, we scored a 35-77, which means we would have had a 15-77. Without that dumb penalty, a 15-77 would have put us in second place, which probably was just a hair behind first place overall, but we would have taken second overall. That's, that's penalties for you. Can't explain how I missed that one. I mean, I made sure my dot was buried. Anyway, don't want to ramble on too much about penalties. I guess the point here is, and you can see in the footage, uh, I had zero malfunctions. I had no issues fitting any of these parts to this gun other than a Krebs safety that was really the only one that was kind of a little weird. So we ended up keeping our factory safety and just loosening it. Had no issue manipulating safety. My biggest gripe about this gun was how chunky this pistol grip is and just how far away it is from that trigger. It is really really far you are reaching to pull that trigger the recoil was awesome that muzzle brake really really works that unrivaled uh, three chamber brake it might not be the most you know sexy brake if you're into three gun and stuff i guess you're used to crazy looking brakes like this but as far as function goes it is highly functional works really really good and you can buy those in 14 by one but you know this thing's cool it's a super minty romanian ak it's a shame that it's a moon cut receiver because this would be one uh, that would be worth taking back to a carbine state with a stock and a grip because it is so cherry and it's got the mag dimples it's got the blued internals it's freaking beautiful super clean chrome bore threads on this thing were super clean on that muzzle uh the spring detent was all there i mean everything was there you just can't lock a bayonet onto it but it is pretty cool that you can bubba this thing up pretty good and you know to me it's kind of funny showing up to these matches with just a goofy looking gun, that actually ends up doing really well. It's a second kind of cool, it's pretty pretty dope. Anyway, if you wanna see this gun more, I, I wish I would have had more time to go get more B-roll, shooting this ahead of time just to have more like footage at the range, talking about it, shooting it, but we literally had to, like, to get it ready last minute to go shoot this match and we did and I'm happy with how it came out. But I do wanna go just spend a day at the range with this, maybe even change it up even more and uh, try to get even better with this Ban Era AK. Every now and again, you'll find stuff like this. I'm pretty sure they have. So this kind of covers everything. These are your, you know, your Mac 90s, all the weird Romanian stuff. There's some weird Hungarian stuff, and of course, all those Saiga Sporters. Uh, a lot of that stuff has really good bones, and that's a great gun to buy on the cheap. At least it was. It might not be today, because the cat's out of the bag that those things are out there, and with a few parts, you could have a super sick gun. This thing's pretty sick. So uh, I'm gonna try to get more footage of it at the range just screwing around. But anyway, really appreciate you watching. Go find one of these things. Some Someone's dad, someone's uncle bought one of these and it's just been sitting in the closet and you've been avoiding it because it looks gross, but they're actually pretty sick. All right guys, that's it for you today. If you want to support the channel, go buy third pin threads, pick up a hat, pick up a t-shirt. It's the best way to support us. We also have a discount code for Slate Black Industries. All that's down in the description below. And we'll see you next week.